Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. So, getting around to another one of the pickups from Blade Show. Uh, this is the Fox Knives Desert Fox. And this one was unplanned, um, but if you guys have seen this knife before, or maybe you like one picture of it, it's because this knife won the Blade Show 2015 Most Innovated Imported Design. And back in 2015, I saw one picture. There was only one picture of this knife, and I could not find it anywhere. I literally checked every couple of months for this knife, and nothing came about. So this year, when I was at Blade Show, and I walked by the Fox Knives booth, and they had um, one of these in bronze and one in blue in the case, I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely interested in that piece. So anyways, this is definitely a story of love and lust. Uh, we're going to go through the specs, overall impressions, and details as always. First, let me show you guys what this ships with because it is quite impressive. So, it's a box. It's a nice box. Inside, you do get uh, this beautiful leather case uh, made in Italy. And then, uh, certificate of authenticity. You get a tool here. Um, but, yeah. Very, very nice uh, presentation, all that. That might be hand-signed. Anyways, um, yeah, beautiful stuff. So Fox Knives, uh, manufacturer out of uh, Portonone, uh, which I believe is in Maniago, like the uh, region there. But they've been around and doing knives for a long time. And at the end of this video, I will post the link to a video done by Funker Tactical where they went out and interviewed uh, Fox Knives and showed pictures of the production facility and the town they live in. It is an incredibly well done video. Um, I highly suggest you guys take a look at that if you are interested in Fox Knives in general. Um, or, I don't, hell, if you're not interested in Fox Knives, still watch the video. I think it's really well done. So Fox Knives been around for a long time. They produce a lot of knives for a lot of different companies. So some of you guys may own knives that you didn't know but is produced by Fox Knives. So specs, let's jump into it. Okay, shoot, hold on. Grabbing the pair two. All right. So size comparison. Here we are. All right. In terms of specs, we are looking at a blade length of th just about three and a half inches. Handle length of about four point nine, giving us an overall of about eight point five, give or take. The overall weight on this thing is a hefty 5.82 ounces. Blade thickness 0 0.1, uh, 0.15 inches thick. So there we are next to the para. It's a titanium frame lock. Does run on bearings, titanium pocket clips, standoffs, and it uses uh, Borkman's twist damasteel. So. Man, just an overall beautiful, beautiful design. Um, so overall impressions, again, I've lusted after this thing for years. I've looked for it for years. Complete impulse purchase. At the booth, here's one of the things. So I, uh, I talked to John Cotolo several times. He was the translator there at the booth. Super nice guy. Um, but they were asking full um, retail for this knife at the booth, which was like 700 bucks. Um, and I talked them down because, you know, that's what you normally do. And then I came home to find that I actually paid a little bit more than you can find this for at um, dealers. And the only dealer right now is Lamnia over in Finland that has it. They're 100% solid. I've ordered from them several times. So, anyways, um, you know, full retail is just about, or retail is just about 550 So, uh, really happy I did not pay the full 7 I would have been uh, cranky to say the least. So, anyways, fit and finish is phenomenal. The details are killer. The design is absolutely stunning to me. I do have a few qualms though, the biggest of which is going to be the amount of space they left for that pocket clip, the gap in there. Um, there's also a sharp spot here, and they could have added a little bit more relief here on the, uh, on the milling so that you can get your thumb in there, but Anyways, we'll look at that in a little more detail. Other than that, just a stunning design. Uh, apparently done with, um, oh gosh, I don't remember the, the designer now. I'll put it in the notes in the description box below if you guys even care. But anyways, definitely a 
I don't know, kind of a form over function, but you're not necessarily sacrificing any function type of design. Um, one of the most beautiful designs I think I've seen in a long time. So really happy to have this one. It has not been getting a lot of pocket time because it is difficult to get in and out of the pocket with that pocket clip. Um, yeah, fit and finish is stellar. So anyways, those are my overall impressions. Love it. It's expensive. Do I think it's worth the price? Um, when you compare it to some of the other limited editions from some of my favorite companies, I think the price that you pay, you know, at dealers is is fair, right? I, I think I think the price is fair. You guys might think I'm nuts. I've got problems. Who cares? So let's look at it in detail. Actually, let's talk about the lack of a flipper tab. So there are a couple different variations of this knife. This one does not have a flipper tab. They have a less expensive version in G10. It uh, uses N690 steel in lieu of, you know, obviously this beautiful um, Dama steel or Dama steel. And it, the one with the N690, the less expensive version, does have a flipper tab um, for this knife instead of using this cutout in the blade kind of like a... Not a thumb hole, but a thumb recess, whatever it is. And so one of the uh, one of my followers on Instagram reached out to them and said, "Hey, why doesn't this one have a flipper tab when the less expensive one does?" And their response was that it would be too expensive and they would waste too much steel to do it. And I thought that was a little bit odd. But then I was talking to my friend Nick, who's a machinist. He immediately grabbed his calipers, went up 1.5. He's like, "Anytime you jump up to two inches on specialty steel." If it's a special order, the cost climbs astronomically. And then, you know, if you just have a little flipper tab right here, you're going to be wasting a lot of steel that's, again, very, very expensive for this type of steel, especially if it's a special order at two inch bar stock. So, I don't know. I mean, when I saw this knife, I was like, oh, lack of a flipper tab. It's because it would have ruined the overall lines or the, you know, kind of the flow of the design, which, you know, it may or may not. I mean, the N690 version, less expensive one at 230, is still a pretty cool looking knife. Um, I might head down to Blade HQ and handle one at some point just to compare it. But anyway, so the let's talk about the opening method. So again, it uses that recess or, yeah, we'll call it a recess. Oh my gosh. It works really well when I'm not like working around a camera. Um, but it works really well with the middle finger flick too. Honestly, I don't have any trouble opening it normally, except for right now when I'm underneath the camera. But it works well. I mean, it's it's fine. Um, I have no qualms with it. And again, if you're buying this knife in this price range with these with this styling, I don't think you're terribly concerned about hey, is, you know, is it the easiest thing in the world to open? There are a lot of less expensive knives that'll open way way easier. So. Anyways, no qualms. It does use a flat grind, you know, half height, saber grind if you want to call it. It's pretty freaking slicey. It comes to a nice thin edge. It goes through paper like nobody's business. If you guys care, again, I don't really want to do paper cuts on video. I think it's a little bit cliche. If you guys want to see it, you're welcome to let me know. Um, slight swedge towards the tip. Some nice effective jimping that is done in a pretty long, it's done in a long, uh, long run of it here, so you can get different grips depending on the size of your hand. But ergonomically, the knife is very, very comfortable. Do you have a slight sharpening notch here, and then it, you know, the sharpened portion ends well before you hit the frame for those fixed angle systems. Is it the best blade to handle ratio? Again, no, but for me, that's not what this knife is about. So very smooth. God. Again, guys, it's it's honestly not that difficult to open. There we go. But again, it's it's really well made. It's a really well made knife. The pivot here is mildly decorated tight. Um, I think it's stainless. Nope, titanium. Titanium pivot, and we do have a D shape here on this side, so it's not going to free spin on you, which is nice. Now the handle has some pretty cool milling. Obviously, we've got some. Well, 
depending on how you hold it, some horizontal or vertical lines milled in. Some nice details here that match the cutout on the, again it's not a cutout, the millwork or the milled groove, blood groove, whatever the hell you want to call it here in the blade. And so it's um, a very nice transition, well balanced. Some additional holes, I don't know, little divots here for some added complexity and then a very generous uh, lanyard hole at the back. Standoffs does use, you know, a bag style pocket clip. And again, this is one of my qualms. The, the gap just isn't big enough for my jeans. And again, maybe I need jeans with thinner pockets or I need, you know, pants that are specific towards everyday carry. Um, but I wish this had a little bit more gap in here for my jeans. This thing would get way more pocket time if it did. There's a stainless steel lock insert here on the lock bar. There's the over travel stop you can see right there. I'm going to stop trying to open it that way. Now, there is a, a sharp spot right here where the frame was cut. So, um, depending on where you grab it, you're going to hit that sharp spot. Let me see if I can leave an indent in my finger for your viewing pleasure. But I don't know. Some most of the time I don't feel it in the hand a couple times if I get in, you know, get in there wrong, I'll feel that sharpened edge. And then they could have taken they did a little bit of milling here on the lock bar and the show scale so that you can get in there. Um, a little bit more milling would have been appreciated. So and there's no internal milling or skeletonizing, which is why it does weigh in, you know, 5.8 ounces, give or take. But anyways, you know, this, again, this is, I didn't buy this because it's like the best user ever. I mean, I bought this knife because I quite literally lusted after it for two years. There was one picture, nothing else came up, and it took him two years to get it out. So anyways, I'm pumped to have it. I think it's absolutely stunning. Um, ergonomics again are very very good in my hand and you know if you like this design but you want to try a less expensive version you could try the G10 and 690 combo for about 230 instead of jumping to 550 for this version so anyways guys um, hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at this video um, if you've been lust lusting after this piece like I have for years um, again you can hit up Lamnia in Finland they're the only one who has that version. None of the US dealers have the premium version yet. Who knows, they might in a couple months, um, depending on when you see this video, but if it's soon after the upload, um, you'll have to go overseas, which again, is it's not a big deal if you're ordering from them. I've, I've done it several times, so um, yeah. But it, it was an absolute pleasure to pick this one up at the show from the booth. Um, there's something a little bit special kind of about that that process. It's not necessary, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say, when you take into account travel and food and uh, hotel rooms. Um, actually, I paid a hell of a lot more for this one than um, I otherwise could have if you take all of that into consideration. But, man, I did want the blue one, to be honest. Um, I hesitated. I waited a day and came back, and the blue one was gone. So I was like, screw it. I'm taking the bronze. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with the bronze, but the blue against the the damage still provides a little bit more contrast, which I like. So, anyways, I hope to see more stuff from Fox, their in-house brand, um, in the future. Their fit and finish is phenomenal. A couple details that could be addressed on this one, but, I mean, the overall quality is absolutely there. So, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Follow me on Instagram, and as always more videos to come. Take care.